And once more we venture into the land of Amatia, a strange place in which the gods are removable, sometimes replaceable, and sometimes that causes problems. This is another episode of the Legends of the Drowned Isles, Campaign 2, The Great Confusion, in which my players are situated a thousand years in the past of the previous campaign, in which the um, entirety of the multiverse is kind of messed up at that particular point. At this particular point, they're searching out a friend who is taken through to one uh, particular plane, the plane of eternal shadow. I am Mark the Encaffeinated One, the host, GM, and general uh, godbotherer, I guess, to, to use a, a terrible a terrible slang term. <laughs> don't think it probably applies properly, but we can we can just assume that I meant it in the best possible way. I am joined here by my players, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat. I play Silas Marsh, and I'm currently trying to keep my cat away from my food, my keyboard, and everything else. <laughs> my name is Marie, and I play Annie with better sound than ever. It's true. <laughs> hey, I'm Max, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, and I suspect I may also have feline problems later on today. Uh, I'm I'm isolated. The only felines I have are the stuffed ones behind me, and they never lived, at least not unless you're talking about dreams or nightmares. Well, we... I mean, you also have Pat as your decoy. That's true. That's true. <laughs> he can be he can be blamed and sicked on by the cats. Uh, we'll return back to the map. We have been in the plane of eternal shadow, uh, in which the the lord of that plane, Petoro, has been it seems quite disturbed by the events of a god missing. Last the players had encountered Peturo in the thousand years hence, Peturo was in fact almost nothing more than a skeleton of his former self, having been consumed. But at this point, uh, his rage and, and concern seems to spread across this rocky enclosed uh, cave-like area. Every once in a while, uh, drawing forth, it seems, uh, uh, beings from another plane. In particular, uh, one had been drawn through, one Melora Cartwright, a friend of yours, when uh, sudden portals had burst through into the town of Elthvater in the world of Omesha. You've managed to find a way to build portals to other planes and have come through in search of Melora, trying to find out what happened. Uh, and have found yourself uh, an erstwhile ally named Rodolfo, a dwarf who seems to be, I suppose, uh, a local, <laughs> also seemed to be dead when you first met him, uh, and had promised to take you to where uh, Melora had been held. Upon arriving, you find a dilapidated uh, fortress um, where very large beings of quite a bit of distortion about the face and body uh, seem to be lording over several prisoners of one kind or another. You made, well, I can't say you made plans. You made an entrance, let's put it that way, with uh, Silas putting on the guise of some sort of chain-like devil trying to bluster your way in. Uh, d uh, looking for a prospect to purchase, uh, a, uh, a female human slave was kind of the way you were putting it. Uh, and after looking around and determining that nothing like that was there and going under the scrutiny, perhaps a little bit of these creatures, uh, was something called by Rodolfo off in the distance. In response, they seem to have triggered some sort of closure or trap as you heard, uh, massive amounts of stone falling. Uh, and from, yeah, from within, you can see a, a mountain of stone essentially has formed, closing off the valley in which this de decrepit fortress lies. Now, where we last left off, there was the strong possibility that combat might ensue. And it still might, but it has not yet. And while somewhat menacing, they are turning to you, and with um, a difficult-to-interpret look because of their distorted facial features, 
um, seem to be eyeing you all with some scrutiny. The one who seems to be uh, in charge, um, whose name labeled here is Zorvax. I'm not sure if you actually heard the name. You might have from Rodolfo or from one of the others saying it. But for my purposes, to make the labeling easier, I'll mention Zor uh, Zorvax. Um, now that the closure has happened in the valley, uh, turns to you all and says, in still the sort of broken common he had been using before, now, tell truth to Zorvax. Why are you here? Why seek this person? What danger do you bring? We bring no we danger. Are here because I want them back. And there is no danger if we get what we want. Your face is not your own. Does not match your soul. Why deceive? I, I doubt my soul matches my face anyways. You don't need to know. Do you have her or not? If not, we will leave. Determined. But souls are interesting. Yours, and points at Medric. Mm -hmm. Glows, you have God in you of some kind. Yours, pointing at Silas, is dark and has tendrils. And yours, turning to Annie, has twice as much as it should. Mm -hmm. I know the woman you seek. We had her. We picked her up. It was not easy. She fought well, as did her pet. Do you still have the pet? Pet was destroyed. Where, where is remains? No remains. Not here. No the soul. Where the battle happened? Then we can perhaps purchase the information on her location from you. Hmm. Bargains. Good. You have your souls. That is rare. Valuable. They are not... He kind of turns his head a little bit, and you can see with that one giant eye, the, the scrutiny kind of come down upon you, much more certain and much more direct. Not broken. You are not meant to be here, you strangers. Hers was mostly clean, too. No longer clean. Worn down, as all who travel through here. How long That's ago we did find you... her and bring her to her original plane? How long ago did she appear here? Hmm. Time here has little meaning. Not recently. Not in the distant past. She is captive now, given over to another. This one we do not like. Purpose is lost. Wait, they do not what? They do not like. Oh, like, okay. If you can get her, Maybe you can do work for us. We cannot challenge them. Who are they? Many names. Avatar of despair. Grinder of hope. Destroyer of future. 
Dream Taker. Have purpose. But as mighty Paturo turns eyes elsewhere, purpose lost. We have purpose. We serve our purpose. Who's Paturo? Lord of Shadow. Listen. And as the great being bade you to listen and kind of tilts its head, you hear off in the distance a sort of rumbling sound. It's like an extended rumbling. And then it fades. And then there's sort of a trumpet which follows. Paturo searches looks for something I not understand. But eyes no longer on shadow, eyes on everywhere else. We go, we take, we bring back, nothing satisfy. Is this picture, is he a god? Here? Yes. So even gods can fall victim to this confusion, apparently. That's terrifying, apparently. This is place of purpose. My form, my body, broken through service of purpose, rebuild. And with that, there's sort of a a grunt from the others, a sort of acknowledgement, a little bit of hope, but also despair kind of mixed in. You see me, you think what? Giant? Ugly. Once not ugly. Once not... Mine stopped but fell, lost part of soul, just as these do. And it kind of gestures over to one of the cages where you can see um, probably the one in the back, a dwarven woman kind of sitting inside this cage, looking with some interest, but also kind of greedy eyes. And she kind of if any of you pay attention, she looks to try to catch your eyes and kind of nod to bring you closer. What is broken must be apart in peace and in pieces. Rebuilt, reused, made new. A question for the DM. So, um, when he was listing off like Avatar of Despair, Grinder of Hope, Destroyer of Future, Dream Taker, is that referring to Paturo or to something else that's active while Paturo was looking elsewhere? Um, in this case, it was referring to that other thing, which was okay. what Zorvax complains was not suiting its normal purpose. So. So I, just to make sure that I understand, this dream taker is trying to make take, take the place of Paturo while he's distracted. Is that what's happening? Just to make sure. I don't know of place, but power, yes. Okay. has a purpose. Too much of its purpose now. You talk about purpose. What's the purpose of this place? This place? He gestures around to the fort. The fort and this entire realm. This place is to hold those who need to be remade, who are broken, 
who do not wish to be remade. We find, we hold, others do other work. This place, gesturing wide now, this place is eternal shadow, opposite of the worlds. This is where people who are broken come, are brought to sometimes. But not always. There was a time when this was sanctuary. And what happened? It began to fade as Peturo became distracted, looked elsewhere. Something was lost. I am not that old. They say, I am not that old or not that old? I am not that old. Okay. What exactly do you want for telling us her location? To get your friend. You will face or fight or sneak to the dream taker. From the dream taker, you take. It is a thing which holds power. And kind of shouts out a couple of words in, um, I don't think any of you recognize the language before to the others. And there's a bit of a discussion amongst them. And Zorvax shakes his head. I have heard another mortal call it. Locus of intent. I do not know what this means. Is that something we recognize? Um, you can make an arcana roll, maybe. Oh boy. Well, hopefully uh, Silas also makes an arcana roll, because my arcana is off. <laughs> hey, they changed the menus in roll 20. Yeah. Right, so that's a 12, because I have a minus one for arcana. Okay. And they no, seriously, what happened to 13, the old dice roller? I don't know. It's been replaced by the new dice roller. <laughs> and a four from from Annie. I am focused on make trying to make plans. Okay. <laughs> um, it does not sound familiar to Nax, and for. Silas, and you both kind of have the, the literal, literal the translation, which is, it is a place of intent or a focus or a location. But the way that Zorvax talked about it sounded more like an item. So it's hard to say exactly what, how that translates. Take this. And power lore. Purpose rediscovered in humility. So you'll tell us where she is. We go get her and bring this back to you. We will have one lead you there. To get her back, you will need to take this. And you want it brought back to you? 
Yes. I want to make an insight check. This guy seems schemy and evil. I mean, he's a slaver, so it's probable, but... I just want to see if his... Uh... If his desire for this seems to be greedy or, ooh, I'm going to get some vengeance on people sort of thing. Okay, so you're looking for a motive. Oof, 21. Kind of. Nice. Yeah, natural 20. Um, It's hard to read his distorted face um, because any expression you would recognize is, is sort of turned and twisted or sometimes muted, sometimes over-exaggerated. Um, even the the body shape itself is turned and twisted um, and hard to kind of read. But there I mostly is... look at his relatively normal eye. <laughs> there is there is an intensity there. Um, and there's sort of two emotions that sort of spring to mind out of this. One is sort of um, almost hope where they're looking at you as being able to do something maybe that they cannot do. Um, there is also a little jealousy where every time they mention the locus and then when you mention bringing it back, there is an eagerness there for whatever this power holds. Um, but also kind of a genuine hope that you'll do this. There is a steel in the back of the eye, if you will, where if you don't agree, you're just in, just like everyone else here. And then they're kind of sizing you up in terms of what will it take to put you in a cage? And they tell us where she is. We will rescue her. And take the locus. Yes. Swear to it on meaningful thing for you. And the two also swear. All right. And before we do this, could you also let us know where you vanquished her rocky friend? Mm, yes. All right. I'll also try to quietly whisper over to Medrick that we can probably just resummon him with the stone now. Do we even have the stone, though? Yeah. yeah. No, the stone is a separate thing from him. Oh, okay. Yeah, you still have the stone somewhere. I thought it went away, like, whenever he was summoned. No. No, it's still there. We had it. We could have summoned him, but we weren't because we, we were hoping he was still defending her. Right, right. And if we summon gotcha. him back, he'd disappear. Okay. Never mind that comment then. <laughs> I totally, Medrick totally knows what he's doing. I mean, he's he's got such a nice, like, minus one score in Arcana. <laughs> uh, Silas will uh, hold his staff up and uh, generate an image of uh, the mother. He says, In the name of the mother, I will rescue Melora and do whatever is needed to bring her back. The large eye looks at you with some scrutiny, and you feel an arconic shiver, as if something is taking strength and hold. Taking it away from me, or giving, or is he getting hope? It's more like a rope has settled across your shoulders. Okay. Who's next? I swear by the power of Ignis, I'll do everything I can to bring her back. And your trinket, too. And similarly, you get that sort of sense of, almost for you, it's it's more like a heavy backpack has been put on. One that you would have worn during war times when making the yeah. marches across to the battlefields. I'm at drawing a blank of what what would be important for for Annie. I uh, swear, I swear on the name of the hot captain that. Uh... <laughs> By the power of Valeria. 
You can the, make the a, kind... You can make an insight check if you want to try to suss out the the meaning of what's happening. Yeah. Okay. It's a moderate roll. What I'll say is this flashes back to number of times you've seen people give fealty to your parents where they are, and even especially the seven, when they make their, their annual renewal, if you will, a vow to the, to the kingdom that they will do it. There is a, 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 a request here for sincerity, uh, but also something which is, is meaningful. So what are you saying? On my kingdom, I swear that we will bring this back. And to you, and maybe you'll discuss this later amongst yourselves over fire, but at least in your own mind at the moment, the feeling is not so much of a burden across your shoulders as the weight of a crown being placed upon your head. And... Zorvax nods. And from other, too. Looking at Annie. She, she just said what do you mean from other? Both of you. She's There's only just one. one of me. Tilt of the head. Alice is looking at her with detect magic. Uh, with the tech magic, um, let's see, there's a ring upon her finger, which is glowing magically um, of, i trying to remember what the magic is in that case. It's not. It, it wouldn't be the mind block one. I don't think he could sense that. You can but sense the ring, another... but you couldn't sense, you can't sense its intent. Well, um, no, I think specifically the one that blocks. Uh, oh, does that not show up in detect magic? It, tur it turns invisible. It to, can. To the naked eye, but not necessarily yeah. to detect magic. Well, detect magic can't detect invisibility or else invisibility wouldn't work anymore. That's fair. That's fair. There's an odd, there's an odd uh, edge case there. Um, I don't know what but else. Uh, does he see anything other than the expected magic items? Uh, I have a cloak, a ring of protection, a brooch of shielding. Hmm. I don't think he would be able to detect it, but he would try anyways. Make an arcana roll. Okay, 14. Just for a moment, um, there is a natural aura that every living being gives off and is detectable by magic. It's mostly one of those things you don't even pay attention to. And it's easily blocked by any visible thing, like you can't see it through a wall, that sort of thing. Just for an instant, it almost feels as though there is a shadow around Annie. But then it disappears. Hmm. He's right. There's something there with you. I don't know what that would be. Zorvax takes a step forward towards you, holding out his hand. I can speak to them. Okay. And as soon as you say okay, he lurches forward, jabs his hand into your chest. It's shocking, but you don't feel anything at the moment. And it's as though he's down deep and grabs a hold of your spine. And then twists slightly counterclockwise um silas as you're watching you see that sort of shimmer distinctly form for a second slightly outside and uh, to the left if you will of uh of annie's form you notice it because you're looking through the detect magic medric you don't really notice anything except for the fact that this large thing has just jammed its hand wrist deep into your friend's chest, who doesn't seem to be screaming at the moment, but probably has somewhat of a surprised look on her face. Yeah. Silas is getting ready to let loose some blasts if necessary. Okay. You're muted, uh, 
next. Uh, your headphone is up, or your microphone is up. Right, my bad. <laughs> I'll put my hand on my sword, but not pull it out, just because, like, I know uh, Rodolfo did the same thing to me, and it didn't, like, cause any permanent damage. But if he does cause permanent damage, then I'm ready to just... There is an odd feeling, Annie, mm -hmm. as you kind of feel like... It's as though someone has stuck their hand not just into your into your chest, but almost like it's between the layers of your heart, pulling them apart ever so slightly. It is uncomfortable. And in the back of your head, you hear a, uh, a frightened feminine voice. Small, inaudible outside, but you can hear. And there's a, a word from Zorvax. Swear. By her life, I swear. No one else hears that except for Annie. He nods, pulls his hand out gently. There is a sense of, of your body pulling itself back together, like parted clothing that sort of shifts back into location. And there's... um. Like the like the light of a like the light of a candle in the far end of a dim hallway, there's a little bit of presence that now remains of this this thing that had spoken. Your words are true. Hear mine. Do this. We will not harm you. We will help. We are bound not to do direct. But those we care for can help. Rodolfo calls out. There's a squeak from outside the walls as Rodolfo hears his voice and feels the summonings. Take them. First to where the woman they seek fell. Then to the dream taker. No. No, I'm not going there. You will. And there's a sense of command in his voice. I don't want to. You will. And there's this, the, the creature reaches up one distorted hand, and in that hand, manifesting for a second, um, filled with what would be described as sort of necromantic energy from the detect magic point of view, there appears to be a coin hovering in the air in its hand, and it starts to close its hand in on the coin. For uh, Annie and Medric, you can actually hear the sound like someone crushing rock, but it lets loose a small scream in the familiar voice of Rodolfo. No! Do this. I will return your coin. I told you it moment. wasn't me. There's a quiet moment. I will. And then opens its hand, the coin disappears. Follow Rodolfo. He is weak, frightened. He will betray you, or try. But he knows the way. And if he betrays us, he doesn't get his coin back, is that correct? If betrayed... Take a coin. Right, you heard the man. I'll nod to uh, Annie and Yep. Yeah. And Rodolfo comes skittering in. You're not sure how he came in because you heard the masses of, of stone. He doesn't come in through the main entrance. It seems to sort of appear. Um, cringes as he sees the others. The ones, there's one up on a uh, pillar 
who's watching everything. Um, and then the other one from across the, the way. But does kind of make his way in, looks up at Zorvex and looks over at the rest of you. We go. It's dangerous. You'll probably all die. If we first, be hmm. careful. If you die. And if we don't die, then we, we'll, we might find coins. You want coins, right? If you die, I get coins. And I get away. And then kind of looks up at Zorvax. Not that that's going to happen. Do you need anything? Can I help? Silas will lash the uh, uh, Rodolfo with an Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, that's an Just attack roll. Just a single one as a warning. Uh, oh shoot, I don't have that up there now. <laughs> oh, that should be the same. No, that's a DC. Huh. Well, that should be the same attack total. Um, so 14? Yeah. Uh, he steps out of the way and runs to stand behind the stone on the other side. He seems fairly spry for someone who was recently apparently dead. Hmm. Um, betray us. You will die first. And uh, to note, uh, Medric and Annie have not seen this attack before. It Wait, almost was... looks like a uh, a bluish, greenish tentacle lashed out and smacked the area. Knocking I'm away just... a bunch of stones. I'll just raise an eyebrow, but say nothing. That's Is one Silas keeping secrets from people. Never. <laughs> <laughs> you hear from behind the stone. That's one. We will go now. Be wary, but be just. I'll nod to him. Is there anything on the way that we should avoid and look out for? Everything. I know you now. Others will see you as untended. May try to start your breakdown. You will need luck. And with that, he raises an arm. Good to know. And the one near the front door seems to concentrate for a moment. Uh, let's see what their name is listed here as. Grukash. And you can hear the stone that was blocking the way outside disappear as it crawls back in on itself, as if commanding the stone itself. The way is clear. Okay. Silas will just look at the others and then follow uh, Rodolfo. Off we go. Okay. We're going on an adventure. Rodolfo um, skitters on ahead and moves quite quickly for someone so small and, again, who seemed to be dead recently. Looks back once in a while to see if you're following, but does keep quite a distance. 
for you, um, Silas, you feel like the distance is probably there to keep range from you as much as anything else. Is it, is he still within about 120 feet? Nope. Okay. And you feel like, uh, as he crests a, a hill, you're not quite certain if you find him on the other side, but you do, at least for the moment oh, seems I, to be. I still have him hexed. I can track him for the next day. Oh, you hexed him as well. That's right. Him. Okay. He may not be, he may not be aware of that, but you get him, get the impression that, um, he does like to keep as much blocking of sight f from you guys as possible. Um, no the, problem. He leads you off through what quickly becomes apparent as actual paths. The ground itself is mostly barren, made up of a, a very dense rock. But the pathway, you realize, was not so much carved or created as perhaps made by the many feet you've traveled through here before. Somebody roll me a d10, please. Nice roller, or somebody else can get to it before I do. Number five. Five. Okay. Um, as you crest a particular hill and look down over, you realize you cannot see Rodolfo anywhere. Ahead, the ground seems to be covered in a deep, dark, cloud-like shadow. The sound of a, of a tumultuous storm comes to you. You didn't hear it on the other side of the rock, and even standing there, it's almost as though the sound dies from the center point of this storm, which is about 200 feet away. Um... Off to where one. Do I, sorry. Nope. Please go ahead. Uh, when do? Uh, where do I sense him? You sense him off to the left, behind some rocks, basically hiding behind some boulders. Okay, I will walk over there. Okay. Silas seems to just turn and walk in a particular direction. The other two of you notice that there are figures moving through in this within this storm. Um, there also seems to be some sort of, as the storm moves away, a little bit of glowing residue, uh, in the outline almost of, uh, like a, a distorted oval. Um, each of you make a perception check. It's a little hard to make out details, but one of you might. Nineteen. Dirty twenty. Ooh, okay. Do we get a twenty-one? Uh, let me check. Plus five. No. God damn it. <laughs> Is that how you invoke Ignis's blessing? Pretty much. <laughs> well, I got a six for, for eleven total. For okay, so not a twenty-one, but an eleven. I guess I had the wrong got side on. of it. <laughs> I think uh, Annie is the first to kind of pick it out first, uh, pick it out, and then uh, as Silas is moving over, looking at what um, Rodolfo might be hiding from, um, you pick out this sort of glowing edge, a distorted oval, and beyond the oval, you see not the the land here, not the chunky rock and eroded surface, but in fact a beach with bright sun on the other side, green grass, um, and um, for a flash, looks like a, a, a palm tree of some kind. Um, it starts to quickly shrink, almost as though it is um, kind of the kind of the reverse of a burning piece of paper. You know, how a burning piece of paper has that outline of white that spreads out across the paper. It's the opposite, where there's sort of an outline of shadow, which is slowly uh, coalescing and closing this spot behind. Um, what you think you may have witnessed from the other side is the opening of one of those breaches, or rather the closing of one of those breaches, as you had seen hitting Elthfodder. The place on the other side didn't look exactly familiar, 
you couldn't pick out which beach it would be, um, but it did look a little bit more tropical than what you had noticed from Elsvater. There aren't very many trees right along the beach until you go further north, and they tend to be more evergreen. So it's probably one of the smaller islands. The um, There is a bit of motion inside the cloud itself as you dimly make out large shapes that seem to be moving within it. Um, and the wind starts to blow cold in your direction. Each of you make a wisdom saving throw. Uh -oh. Okay. 15. Okay. 21. 21. I didn't forget my proficiency bonus system. So, um, Medric, you feel it kind of wash over you, and maybe it's the battle hardening of the field, maybe it's all the terrible things you've, you've faced. Um, you feel the edge of this cold wind, and the heat from within easily defeats this, this cold. For you, Annie, um, what would be something that Annie would turn to when... Disturbed. What would be a, an image from perhaps her childhood or something which is a comforting imaging image for her, especially when she would have been back in the castle? The gardens. Okay. The wind for you, um, while it's cold at first, and you feel a slight shiver on the edge of your being, um, changes to the light breeze blowing through the gardens. But the strangest part is that you didn't think that up, but it came to mind. For Silas, this cold wind blows over you. And for an instant, you feel as though the path you're on is impossible the way you wish to travel, the way you wish to, to bring your goddess to manifestation in the world, will end in terror. It will fail and bad things will happen. It's only for, the, for a breath, but that crosses over your, your mind. Tell me if you are immune to fr the frightened condition. No. Nope. Yeah. No, he has nothing special against that. Okay. You feel for that instant frightened. Are you going to still stand there? The cloud and the, and the cold wind seems to be moving generally in your direction. Well, Silas is moving towards uh, Rodolfo. Okay. Whenever he gets to him, he'll join him behind the rock. You find him cowering with his hands over his head, trying to make himself as small and invisible as possible behind some rocks. He's even taken some of the smaller rocks and piled them up against his body as if to, to look like nothing but stone. I also crouch down and ask him what they are. The, 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 the winds of despair he is calling upon the road fresh, dangerous. All will be lost when their avatar comes. The avatar? You're still standing on the road. Oh. Unless you make some other motion, but... So, so the, the stuff is coming towards us. I'm going to follow Silas. Okay, you saw him jog yeah, pretty quickly group, off. We don't want to. We don't want to split the party. Okay, you both kind of see this, and you 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 don't feel entirely affected. You see Silas quickly jog off to one side of the road, and then I can follow. overrun Silas easy. Yeah, <laughs> let's say the so both of you. Going. Let's say both of you arrive just as Silas himself is is crouching down, and very quietly, um, you don't really hear what Rodolfo is saying, but you can hear that he said something, whispering very very lightly. Is everything okay? We must be quiet. Is everything okay? 
We must let the storm pass. The dream taker right. is too powerful when it is fresh. When what is fresh? And I'll just like crouch down next to them and like pull my cloak over myself to like obscure both my glow, basically. <laughs> the dream taker has claimed those who came through the portal. It's there now. Where's the portal to? Somewhere else. I've never been brave enough to get close enough to see. If I could, I could be free. The dream taker is down there? The center of the storm. How long will it be there? He will return back to his... his home soon, once it is fed. Should be neutral pronouns, by the way. I'm trying to keep myself consistent. I'm, uh... I'm going to kind of try to hide behind the, the rock from whatever it is. Okay. As he's speaking and even trying to be quieter and quieter, you hear the wind now growing with uh, intensity and chill. Um... Silas makes another wisdom saving throw. The other two do not. And, okay. All of you can make a uh, stealth check to try to hide from what's coming. Um, Silas, you feel, well, I don't want to say exactly what you feel, but the, the raw emotional intensity of the fear passes, even though you can still see it written very clearly across Rodolfo's face. But you're able to steal yourself and perhaps center yourself on your vision once more. Thank you, Mother. Um, and from, is uh, Medric trying to hide or conceal himself at all? Yeah, I'm just going, I'm just crouching down next to the pile of people. Uh, next to the pile of allies and like putting my cloak over. Okay. Is that your my body? is that your twenty one for stealth then or? Oh no, that's not mine. I thought I rolled. Ah crap! No, where did you go? <laughs> your your stealth roll is hidden is apparently. A hole plus zero, but it's not a disadvantage because of the magical armor. So three. <laughs> okay. And I'm just here. If there's a glow in the road, it's probably just a coin or something. Wait, coins are valuable here. <laughs> so, um, Annie, very adept, as usual, at hiding. Even without a lot of cover, you're able to find a rock big enough. Um, Medric glows slightly as he stands just to, the, just to the edge of the stone, still trying to look out to see what's, the, what's, uh, what's happening, but seemingly not quite aware of the fact that he's basically a beacon and um i'm hiding <laughs> uh silas is not much better kind of standing lording over uh rodolfo and his staff is sticking out from behind the yeah kind of and he's not really bent over as much as he should be um you know that they will be seen and you can feel the storm coming closer is there anything you can do um, is there anything Lonely that I can do? back away from us. <laughs> Run like hell <laughs> in the other direction. Yeah, kind of. I'm gonna... <laughs> um, let me see. I just want to go take a quick look. There's not much that I can do to help. No, there's not much that I can do to help in this case. Uh, I'll, I'll go, psst, Silas, get, I, I, get down. Get down. I'll get down, too. <laughs> There's no time to dance. So, because of Annie's special abilities, I will allow the two of you to re-roll. Annie, you can give the aid action to one of them. Um, 
I am going to aid uh, Medric. Because okay. he's the, the one who has the most trouble hiding, usually. <laughs> Although, technically, he's he's gotten better since then. But... <laughs> or at least I've gotten the more quiet armor. Okay. I'm just setting up just in case. But so, I think... uh, Sias realizes he should be behind the rock. <laughs> Would help. <laughs> okay. So you get a reroll for Medric, and you do get advantage because Annie's actually actively helping you. Nice. All right. But just in case, okay, I do have lower. it potentially set up for the map again. So seven <laughs> and 12. 12. What's your total? 12. 12. Okay. <laughs> Double digits at least. <laughs> yeah, double digits at least. And it's not an outright uh, failure like three is. Um, and because more than half of you now have hidden, um, you feel a little bit more secure. As the storm passes by, um, what you see in the storm um, is kind of a, a color drained version of what you had seen emerge from the storm from the the portals before those massive four-armed creatures that had had come through were grabbing things people uh, you're not sure exactly what they were all after um, are now carrying what looks like uh, three or four people uh, among them there are six of them standing there going through this and at the center of them seems to be uh, at the source of the cloud, if you will, um, seems to be this distorted shadow, um, almost like a, a long extended cloak floating amongst them um, with two piercing glowing portals where eyes would be as it passes by you all. That, that's why they call it the Avatar of Despair. If your friend is caught by this thing, there literally may not be any hope. And you says this is the dream stealer? Dream taker. Dream taker, whatever. It's more than that, but yes. Fresh from a portal like that, this power is unimaginable. And your friend is not there. We should continue to move. I agree. And once again, he kind of ranges further out in front of you. This time, looking back, almost um, you feel to make sure the cloud is moving in the opposite direction as anything else. Um, as you pass the location where that portal had opened, you see that there is um, the, the remnants of a fight. Um, burned ground, some frozen ground. Broken, uh, a broken wagon looks almost cut in half, uh, as well as um, you see boxes of, of, of goods. Um, you kind of conclude that it was a caravan that got interrupted on its route. And now the caravan masters, the caravan uh, participants have been carried away. Um, you already see that the, 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 caravan itself, the wagon itself, the, the, the boxes have already grayed as if they've been out here for a long period of time, or as if any vitality and, and, and life and age have been already drawn out of them from whatever that storm was. You stop to take a look or we can continue on. Um, I, I would stop and take a quick look. Yeah. Okay. In case there's anything we can use going on. Yeah. All right. Um, Rodolfo is not waiting for this, so he does move on ahead. You know exactly where uh, he's at, Silas, nonetheless. The other two stop for a moment to make a quick investigation check as you're mm -hmm. kind of poking through. Yeah, Silas keeps going with Rodolfo. They okay. can catch up easy. Okay. And uh, Medric, okay. Um, 
Annie, you crack open a, a crate with your ever-present um, crowbar right. and find um, nothing but rotting fruit. Um, it looks like it was essentially mangoes, a full crate of mangoes, but they're all rotten now. There's no flies. There's just this sort of goo where they once were. Um, let's actually roll on that chart. I haven't done that for a while. Um, I will have a D100 from Medric. A four. Okay. And a second D100, please. 69, okay. That's a bit Nice. Better. Nice. Okay. I didn't realize I was on mute this entire time. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. having cat problems. Uh, and where are we here? Okay. And 2d4. Okay. Um, you find wrapped up in a significant amount of straw that itself is starting to go bad. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of statues. Uh, okay. They seem to be a very uh, fine quality, um, although f relatively small. They've got small gems for eyes on one of them, and the other one is is uh, holding a a uh, brooch. Um, I'll put this on you. What do these two art objects look like? They're worth twenty five gold each. They're not significant, but um, so you said they're both uh, little statues with gems for eyes. One has gems for eyes. The other one is, has a gem somewhere else, like a. Uh, well, it could be if it's a picture of, of a landscape, it could be the sun or something else. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, there's going to be one gargoyle, I guess, gargoyle-like statues with the, gem, the gems for eyes. Okay. And there's going to be one angel statue with the gem on her, or on, on her heart. Okay. Um, no, no. Is there um, mangoes in Alaria? Um, Ow! Typically or is, not. Is that something that would be... Okay. Typically in the, know... in the Ulvip Sea, which is the, the sort of the western sea, um, that's where you tend to get more of the tropical type fruits. Alaria tends to be more of... Uh, Yeah, more apples, that sort of thing. It's a little chillier on the in the eastern side than on the western side. Uh, I have a D one hundred from uh, from uh, Medric as well. Another one, okay. Yeah. If my cat will like stop stabbing me. <laughs> Roll ninety seven. Ninety seven, nice. All right. I get slightly. Uh, I'm mostly distracted by what a waste mangoes are. So good. They're such a, a rarity. <laughs> it's true. Uh, where is? Keep looking for that chart and keep passing it right on by. Hello, chart. There we go. Ninety-seven. Uh, you find a beautiful silk pouch, uh, fairly large, and within it is coiled in a, an exquisite rope made of pure silk. It weighs about three pounds, uh, and there's a little tag attached to one end of the rope. And the tag says, a light.
Do you speak the word? Yeah, just a sec. Uh, what languages does Medric know, by the way? Yeah, Orcish and Common. Okay. I was writing stuff down. Uh, it is in uh, Common in this case. Okay, well, I will show it to my friends, and it's like, hey, this, this looks fancy. And it says... In cat. <laughs> it says in cat? No. <laughs> <laughs> meow, 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 meow. There's, there's a feline problem. Stop that. <laughs> Bring it. Get it. Cats, I swear. <laughs> right, I won't. I'll show it to my friends, and it says, "There's a word on this." Should I speak it? Considering what the word is, if it lights up, then we might be more noticeable. I mean, we can see what it does, or we can just put everything in the bag of holding and deal with it later. I suppose, and it's also in its own bag, so if it does light up and it's distracting, we can just shove it in the bag, I guess. Oh, I mean, look, has, has the storm passed? Is, is the storm like fairly like far gone now? or You don't see it now. Um, okay. But then again, the gray light tends to hide things, but you don't hear it either. Okay, so I'll, I'll just make sure I'm like hiding mostly between two rocks, and I'll say a light. Okay. The rope jumps and starts to rise. And rises 10 feet, another 10 feet, another 10 feet, until it stands uh, tall 60 feet and seems solid as if tied to something. Ooh, that could be useful. If you want to note it down in D&D Beyond or whatnot, it is a rope of climbing. That was probably on its way to some... Some wealthy person, but no longer. Nice. Cool. This let's, will definitely be useful. Let's put that in the bag of holding with hopes for it to not get destroyed by this whatever yeah. this is that's eating everything. All right. Uh, on a light. I'll just pull on the rope a little bit. Uh, <laughs> on a light. Uh, uh, let's see. Down, boy. <laughs> yeah, essentially, because of the intention, uh, it does simply coil itself back up. All right. Nice. Uh, and then I'll you put it back in the silk bag, and I'll, I'll hand it to Annie for the bag of holding. Uh, you flip the card over, you see there's another word on the other side. Mm -hmm. What is um, it? Which is, um, Easy. But you do feel there's a bit of intent necessary. And when you speak easy, it actually puts knots every one foot to make it easier to climb. Nice. Okay. So a light and a light easy. You continue on. Who wants to give me a D10 roll this time? Somebody else, or should I go again? Entirely up to you. I mean, I can do it again. Eight. Eight. Okay. As you move along with um, Rodolfo well out in advance, and at a certain point he, he moves off of the main road, um, and starts heading towards another spot. Um, and you're the first to sort of notice a cluster off to one side of the road. It looks uh, as though a cave has been sealed off by a lot of spider webs. Um, you can't see any spider. The cave itself is about 10 feet height. But you do see some... some uh, bundles wrapped up on the inside and ever so faintly hear someone moan. Um. 
Could be somebody in danger. Could be a trap. Yeah, I've already. I'm also. I also have that cursed item, by the way. I think we've been forgetting about that a bit. Uh, I have completely forgotten about it, and my brain is not hauling up the details, which has been a while. Shoot. She kept occasionally having to make dex dex saves or oh, running right. and stuff. Good lord, I forgot yeah. all about that. So I've, right I've already caused seconds. enough havoc with that, with, with touching things. <laughs> I really do have... But, uh, oh. Yeah, I'm having pausing issues, pardon me. Uh, I need to find my notes on that. That's weird. Yeah, it was a circlet with a rabbit's foot. A backwards rabbit's foot. Oh, that's weird. The question is, are we going to save, try to save everybody, or are we going to focus on trying to save our friend? So this just says, damn it. I'll go check it out. If it's something easy, then we can do that. He doesn't look happy with this, though. That's basically the, the are we going to stop every, every time on the way to try to help people, or... Sorry about that. Mom had to leave the house, and whenever Mom leaves, the dog blocks the door literally, like, physically, and I have to move <laughs> on. <laughs> um, as you move closer, Silas, um, you do feel or sense that... Uh, even though keeping his distance, um, uh, Rodolfo has stopped, uh, he is kind of hiding again. You don't, you look over, you can't see him, but you see the cluster of rocks he's probably hiding behind. The, um, make a, make a, let's call it a investigation check. And, uh, Silas has his, has, uh, detect magic on again. Okay. He pretty much always has it on, uh, Nothing other than sort of background magical energy yeah. detected in this case. Investigation. Okay. Um, you look at it. It is a very thick um, collection of spider webs. Um, there does not appear to be any path through. And you do make out the sounds of moans from the inside uh, coming from about, looks like three bundles, about four feet um, long that seem to be attached to the inside wall. You see no nothing else. And how far away from us are they? Well, um, the back wall is maybe 15 feet from the front. Yeah. Well, I could clear these spider webs from the entrance with a bit of a flame. Your Silas will be on guard. All right, I will cast... Uh, I'll Produ be, I'll be there as well, ready to attack if something jumps out. I'll cast produce flame as a cantrip. Okay. Into the spider webs. Yep. It only takes a few seconds to to burn them away as you kind of toss a bit of flame onto the onto the spider webs. They burn away pretty cleanly. It burns away all the spider webs. The three people die. <laughs> um, do you move in or someone moving in to investigate those? Uh, if nothing happens, Silas will start to slowly move in. I'll I'll look inside very carefully first. Okay. You can make a perception check if you like. All right. Do, we, do I see anything? Do I see the correct window? Would be useful. <laughs> Not a D100. That would be cheating. 15? 15. 15. You look in um, and kind of maybe holding up the glow of your hand you also kind of glow enough for this this small cave um i like the the idea of like when he's lighting flames just like it appearing like on his thumb and just like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um uh man you gotta there's I, I gotta set up a bar scene at some point where someone's trying to to smoke or something and just or you know, that candle lit and, <laughs> yeah um yeah <laughs> uh yeah you look in the cave itself there looks to be um, piles of, um, 
looks like some bones, some old weapons, um, clothing, all of it kind of gathering dust. No sign of animals, though. I look at the ceiling. It looks back. Anything there? No. Um, <laughs> uh, no, the, the ceiling, there is a, a collection of cobwebs on the ceiling as well. Um, fairly dense, much like the front, but nothing seems to be moving that you can see. Other than the, the sort of, now that there's been sort of energy and, and intensity and some sound, those, uh, uh, those three um, things attached to the wall seem to be moving. And there's a little bit more intense moan. Or cries. I'll go to the things. Help. I'll go to to the one that I'm here that I first heard. Okay. Um, and try to cut free, starting from the top. Okay. Sounds like that's what Medric was going to do. Maybe for another one of them. Yeah. Silas. Silas. Uh, there were three of them, right? Yep. Uh, Silas was just going to aim a eldritch blast at the uh, whatever support threads there were above each of the three okay um that way they don't have to touch the sticky webs i think they've kind of gone in to to do that anyway but you can make it easier um go ahead and make uh, three attack rolls uh it's just one attack roll but uh it's not one for each eldritch beam no uh oh, maybe different targets i'll have to check it might it might be but uh 22 oh. poison. You have poisoned the um, web. Wait, that's no, a saving no, throw. The wrong thing. Yeah, you need an attack. attack yeah, roll. it's the venomous burst. So, okay. That's a 20. Okay. That definitely uh, hits the first of them. And a 27, which is a natural 20. Nice. Nice. And another, and another natural, natural 20. 20. Wow. What? Okay. So, as uh, Medric and Annie are moving forward and kind of drawing out probably small daggers. And then they fall. And then they kind of... <laughs> I'm using uh, the long sword, like, shing, trying think, to be careful, not cutting whatever's inside. Right, so uh, they, they kind of... Ghostly bluish green tentacles lap, uh, or whack out and go, zonk, yeah. zonk, zonk. So the top Show part off. is is released, and the whole thing kind of spins down, because it's still attached by the bottom as well. It starts to flop down uh, onto the, the floor. Uh, and then all three of them simultaneously burst open. And... Hundreds of spiders flow out of these pods and start to swarm over Medric and Annie. So we've got three swarms of intra insects. Um, we will count this as a surprise round from them because <laughs> it's probably pretty surprising and it wasn't initiated by you so much as, as by, uh, by uh, uh, Silas. Um, we're going to do this theater of the mind. Um, consider that they are essentially grappled onto you. You can't really run away unless you've got something that allows you to escape a swarm. Uh, and they will try to bite you. So they may not be able to penetrate your thick hides anyway. Let's Me go. He tries to be careful so that if there's something bad, he can fight it. <laughs> so that's against uh, Annie for a 12. I don't think that hits. No. And a 5 against... Um, against uh, Medric. So, oh, sorry, there are three swarms. So uh, let's roll a uh, uh, odd goes to Annie, goes to Medric. So the two swarms are on Medric, gets an eight. It's unlikely they're, they're going to actually hit, but we'll see. Gross. Uh, as, yes, as swarms of tiny spiders have lured you into their web, I don't know, fighting against them. We will roll quick initiative... Um, doesn't really make a huge difference. Uh, and we will add. I'm trying to figure out how to roll initiative again because the dice counter is new and I forgot how. <laughs> character sheet, where are you? I'm going to re roll initiative just so I can. I forgot to select my character. <laughs> I did select my character. But I'm still going to just put the 20. They got initiative of three, so I'm pretty sure they're going to last. Uh, uh, anyway, do we have a, a Medrix uh, initiative? Almost there it is. There we go. So we start with Annie. They're crawling all over you. 
and uh, twice as many are crawling all over Medric. Um. They don't seem to be bothering too much, but it is very distracting. Let's see here. Um, I don't really have much that can hurt a swarm. Um, it comes down to stabbing each and every individual swarm. Now you can try to do something like brushing them off and trying to get away. If if all of yeah, you are successful with that, yeah, stop dropping. Yeah, all. I think... yeah. <laughs> it works if you're on fire. It works if you're on spiders. You're on spiders, yes. <laughs> Catchphrase. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to try to like brush them off. Okay, we're going to call that a sleight of hand check. The target's going to be hard because they are moving little buggers. Oh. Ten. Ten. Unfortunately, as you're sw swatting them, they seem to crawl up over your hands. Now you can feel some of them crawling underneath your uh, your clothing. Uh, let's see here. And, and, and I say, Silas, why did you do that? <laughs> and Why did you move in close to the <laughs> webs full of spiders? Uh going to drop them from back here. Uh, Medric, you have two swarms that are kind of competing almost to colonize your body. All right. I'm going to remove my shield, put it on the floor, and just roll all over the floor because Medric is well over 200 pounds, and yeah, those, those, little, those little motherfuckers are going are to get crushed. Okay, we're going to call that uh, an acrobatics check. It's going to be gross, but it's going to work. Athletics or acrobatics? Athletics. <laughs> Which is uh, plus five, I believe. Yeah. Splat, splat, splute. Twelve. Uh, that does hit. Uh, give me uh, 2d6 damage. Basically 1d6 to each of the swarms. Seven. Okay. Uh, there is a sort of satisfying uh, squelch as uh, the, not all of them are able to move around you. Um, there is still a significant number of them, however. Silas. I'll scream to Annie, just drop and roll. It'll kill them. How big are the spiders? About uh, half an inch each. Okay, so they're really tiny they're spiders. Tiny. They're really tiny. There's about 100 per swarm. Well, uh, Silas is going to start the, uh, again with the... Um, Eldritch Blast, just using three at a time. <laughs> magic energy tentacles and just swiping through the swarms. Okay. Um, Don't want to hit your friends. Though. <laughs> that would be bad. Yes, but uh, you can you can definitely hit them. Otherwise, hit the hit the swarms. Um, uh, the first two will be at uh, one of the swarms on Medric. Then the sec the last one will be on the second one that's on Medric. Okay. Make a second attack roll for the one that missed. The second one hits. Okay. That was the second attack roll you asked for. Okay. Uh, Medric, you take six bludgeoning damage uh, as Ow. as he tries to swat away the, uh, the swarms on you. He hits once crushing a bunch of them and then they the second group or the first group seems to uh, be a little more anticipatory and all largest lunges to one side um letting him hit you and here i'm hoping i'm like doing a great job at crushing stuff and it's like hey magical thing blasting spider rays and, and mm. spider, spiders win and it's like smack right so now. the 14 hit the <laughs> other group too the 14 hit the other group yes okay. that's the one uh, on, on a, uh, each of them is a d10 damage it's already rolled it there. Uh, no, that's my... I'm rolling my empowered staff attack. Oh, okay. I, I forget to set up an Eldritch Bolt one okay. somehow, or oh. I get lost. Then we will... Uh, well, there's the dice down there. Okay. So the first one took one, and the, uh, the last one took ten. <laughs> okay. 
Wow. Okay. That's a weird distribution so far. Um, yeah. As you manage to kind of swat away at these things and they kind of explode and hiss. Um, well, let's see here. Um, for the one that's, uh, the one that was hit on, uh, them. Nope. And the one that was also hit on them. Yeah. So the, the last one was fired to the ones on Annie, right? You did one for each each of the swarms, is that correct? No, the first two, the one that missed and the first one that hit, hit one of the groups on Medric, and then the third attack hit us, hit the other group that was on Medric. Okay. Um, the one that was more, more than decimated to, in both the literal and figurative terms, um, they crawl away. So one of the swarms has vacated from Medric, uh, leaving only one behind. Um, back around, oh, now it's the spider's turn. Okay. Crawling all over Annie. Now they're completely in touch and all over your body. They will get advantage because they're nasty that way. Still roll the six. <laughs> and the other ones. Don't they, didn't you say that they have advantage? I, I thought I rolled it with advantage. Uh, is that not? No, nope, it's, it didn't. Just it's one. just the one. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. 15, does that hit? Still no. Still, <laughs> Still no. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're going to hit. Uh, and then the other one, let's see if I do this one. There we go. Uh, gets a crit on <laughs> Medric. No. Doing seven points of piercing damage as you, as you feel them kind of bite into your skin. Damn it, they're in the cracks of my armor. Yeah, yeah. It's going to itch. It's going to itch a lot. Um, back around to Annie. Uh, I am going to take Medric's advice and, and stop, drop, and roll. Okay. Seems to be working for him. So this would be an athletics or an acrobatics check? Uh, I will do by acrobatics. Okay. No, 12. A 12 is a hit. So a d6 Ooh. damage. 1d6. Okay. 2. Many of them seem to be stopping and rolling with you. But you do miss. Um, like going, wee, wee. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will then use. I'm going to use half of my movement to stand up and then kind of go on the wall and try to. Doing the bear. The I hope bear. the gravity Whoosh. helps. <laughs> okay. Do you have a second attack or. Nope. Okay. So that'll be the beginning of your next one is to try to scrape them off onto the wall. Medric. They itch. They itch a lot. I will continue to roll on the floor. Me becomes the spider. <laughs> uh, stop, drop, and roll once more. Or continue yep. to roll. Let's get another roll from you then. Athletics. Boop. Nine. Nine. Okay. Unfortunately, they are inside your armor and finding those little nooks and crannies, which make your armor much more comfortable to wear. But unfortunately, it's just big enough for a tiny little spider to hide itself. Next time. Uh, Medric, please give me a wisdom saving throw. Really? <laughs> that's like my main stat. Fuck. <laughs> right now, you're so frantic with the itching that's happening all over your body, you find it difficult to concentrate. There's no other effect, but it could have been positive. Um, Silas, you see your friend struggling to get rid of these spiders. Yep. Um, so one of the groups left him and the other one's crawling all over him? That's right. In fact, you can't okay. really see most of them, but you see him reacting to them being under his cloak and armor and shirt. Uh, and you see another ball of them climbing the wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so first, uh, two of the blasts will... Basically, the uh, the weird force tentacles will come out and kind of gently smoosh the spiders on uh, Medric, and then the last one will go and help Annie. Okay. Um, it will be uh, with um, disadvantage on both of them, because they've now crawled under the clothes. You guys hold still for a second? Tell that to the spiders. But I'll try to hold still as much as I can. Basically, can I ask them not to dodge? 
to negate the disadvantage. The disadvantage is you can't see them. They're effectively invisible for you now. Yeah, but if they're if Medric's not like moving around all over, would that give me advantage to negate it? Uh <laughs> I'd say if they took the help action on their turn, that would count for that, but uh, uh there's, never mind. Then. There's not much they can really do to Okay. You you try to stay still when you have spiders up your butt. Yeah, unfortunately, the first one is a miss. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those cases where the tentacle comes out and it's like poke 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 poke, trying to play whack a mole with any any edge. And then <laughs> second one is a natural double crit, 20 double crit, at disadvantage. <laughs> wow. Um. So that definitely and uh does, does a lot. Uh, the with the crit does six force damage. Okay. That is significant the one, for them. The one on Annie. Is an 18. Uh, 18 also hits. What's the damage mm -hmm. on that one? Eight. Okay. Significant hits on both cases. Uh, as you see uh, now, uh, Medric, uh, you've kind of felt this thing pummel you, this this thing from your friend. And um, you do feel a lot less movement inside. You also feel little squelches here and there as little spider guts are now. Oh, up. That's it's not the cleaning. It's not the best undercoating. No. Um, for for you, Annie, as you kind of rub yourself up against the wall, uh, there seems to be some sort of opportunity for the the uh, thing to pat along your back and kind of scoot, 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 scoot along your back um, to reduce them significantly. Um, that is now their turn. They are... Uh, that's weird. Uh, they are, let's see... Uh, Smart enough, but not too smart. So um, they will attack. Uh, one on um, Annie. And one that on hits. Medric. A 20 hits. Yep. So that does that does five piercing damage. They are below half of them. And does a 14 hit Medric? It shouldn't. Nope. Okay. Technically, I shouldn't count armor in this case because they're on the inside of your armor, but we'll count that as difficulty moving around. It's difficult terrain for them to move around inside yep. <laughs> your armor. Um, but that's that's it for them. Uh, Annie. Okay. I am going to try to coax them out. So I have the the spider cloak thing. Okay. So I'm going to... Can I cast in web on myself to try to, like, give them the web to climb on? Wow. Okay. That's an interesting uh, approach. Um, this is the cloak, the, the spider cloak, was it? or? Cloak yeah, the cloak of arachne. Okay. Gonna quickly check that just to make sure what I know what it does. Da, da, da. Um, cast I can an cast, cast web, a web once spell. a day. Sure, uh, you can certainly cast the spell. Uh, fills mm -hmm. twice its normal area. Wow. Okay. Um, I will say, suddenly webs fill the cavern, shooting out the end of the cave. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's everybody's stuck. It's uh, what is the normal area of the web smell? It's it's. 20 uh, foot 20 cube square, I think 20 foot cube. Yeah, cube yeah. Woof. Okay. This will fill the cave, uh, from that perspective. Oh, uh, that's fair. Uh, especially if it's twice that much. Um, but, um, I'm going to tell Medrick I'm trying something. All right. <laughs> Roll out. Roll out. Uh, okay. Basically trying to like, Low key trick them like I am one of you. Get out of here. Okay. All <laughs> right. Me they're all gonna um, go on me. <laughs> I'll say that you can hold until Medric has had a chance to move out, because otherwise yep. you will catch him in the web. Um, yep. And you can kind of move to the edge as well. And at that point, um, once Medric has moved, we'll cast the spell, and I'll have you make an animal handling roll to try to make it seem as though like no, no, this I'm totally a spider too. See, I make webs, and uh, yeah, okay. Is that that sounds reasonable? Yeah, I think it's an interesting op opportunity. 
Um, hello, fellow spiders. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Medric. You've heard. I am one of you. You've heard Annie say, "I'm going to try something. Please get out." Essentially. Uh, yeah. Right. What would you I'll like to do? Get out. I'll get out uh, near where the exit is. Okay. Still trying to not 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 to move too much in case Silas blasts me again in a good way. Okay, so you're going to stop moving to to help him, or are you going to try to stop, drop, and roll? No, I'll move to the edge of the cave, as Annie said, because she's trying something, and I, I don't know what it is. Okay, but do you want to try to do roll to uh, stop, drop, and roll to get rid of the spiders on you, or do you want to hold still so that hopefully whatever um, Silas is doing will have a better chance of working? I'll use my movement to go near the edge of the cave, and then I'll stand still. Okay. All right. So we'll note that. Uh, Annie, uh, the, what's the magic word to cast the web spell? Entangle. Okay. Entangle. And suddenly, web starts shooting out of the, uh, the cloak. Now, do we have uh, an animal handling roll? To try to convince the spiders who aren't very oh, smart, no. to be fair. All right, Seven. that's that's not good. Uh, spiders are not smart, however. So let's see if they see through. They do not have uh, a uh, perception or intuition skill. So let's see how wise they are. Wow. <laughs> I tried. In this case, uh, they are basically going, awesome, we have more ways to travel. Thank you so much. You're still tasty. Um, but now the cave itself is full of spider webs. We hear Annie go, Medrick, move away. I'm going to try something. Then, All right. Boom. Uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, I can't be affected by web, so. Yeah, you're not bothered by it, so, yeah. Uh, Silas. Annie tried something. It was interesting. Um, Medric is now standing still waiting for the brush off. Are there still a lot of spiders on Medric? Like, uh, I probably couldn't tell. I'll just aim two more blasts at Medric and one at Annie. Okay. Can I, uh, can I tell Silas, can I, uh, like, point, like, okay, I feel them in this location, so if, if you aim anywhere, like, aim there, uh, I'll give you guidance. I'll say you can give guidance. Um, you can't really do the other part of it because you, you're specifically holding still so that they they doesn't get it. I will say um, Medric can make a perception check, a disadvantage. All right. Perception. Cat butt in the way. There's a 19 and it. Wow. Okay, I guess it's 19. 19 or a 25. Um but the 19, uh, with the 19 though, um, at first all of your skin tingles, but then you're like, okay, there's only a few of them left. Um, so you're aware that there are only a few spiders left. Um, yeah. you could point them out next round. That'd be the other, the other option right now though. Uh, the attacks from the, um, yep. Eldritch Blast. Uh, this, this, <laughs> this first one gets the extra D4 from. No, guidance is only skill checks. It doesn't add to attack rolls. So okay, never mind. Then. That's a twenty-four to hit. That definitely hits. For six force damage. Nice. Boom. So it kind of careens off his breastplate, pressing in very little spaces. You you feel with satisfaction, uh, uh, Medric, as scoot, 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 and there's just like one guy that's there. Just still squirming. Maybe there's four of them. It's hard to tell. Eighteen. Is, it, is this against or nine uh, force damage? Against Medrix again? Yeah. Yeah. With that last hit, um, it it comes uncomfortably close uh, to uh, a very sensitive area. <laughs> but at that, after it hits, uh, there is no further movement. Just <sighs> that kind of ickiness left below the armor. Thanks. And the one on, on Annie? Yeah, this one is still at disadvantage because uh, I can't uh, really see her, but uh, I got an 11. Unfortunately, 11 is not quite enough. Oops. Uh, and they didn't take damage, so they have no chance to think, should I be doing this with my life? So uh, it is up to Annie now. Oh, sorry, it's up to uh, the spiders. 
right, spiders well, still get a turn. <laughs> spiders get a turn. Hello, spiders. 18? Yes. Uh, and they are not below half, so you actually take 10 piercing damage as you feel them kind of burrowing in now on the skin. Maybe that's why they decided not piercing, to leave. Right? This is just piercing, right? This is just piercing. It's regular piercing. Um, I'm not affected by and web, so I'm going to just stop, drop, and roll. Okay. Try to get more of them off. Oh, yeah. 20, absolutely. 25. Uh, D6. 1, D6. 4. Nice. Uh, you can still feel a few of them, but they've definitely gotten numbers lower, and they seem to be not moving as fast. Take that as you will. Medrick, you see Annie still rolling around. Yeah, I see. Uh... Run over and start I'll, I'll beating also say the shit that didn't work when the web thing didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm by the edge of the cave. Mm -hmm. The webs, I'm assuming, are in the middle of the cave. And is any more towards the edge of the cave or towards the back? She's of the outside the cave now. Okay. Because you stepped to the edge of the cave, did web, and then stepped away from the cave. I believe uh, that's Hold correct. still. No, he he stepped out of the cave. I stayed in the cave. Oh, okay. I stepped at but the you edge. But came out. Like you came out just yeah, now. Yeah, she had centered web on herself. Oh right, it's yeah, it's yeah, a. The web was centered on me. It's a globe. Sorry, you're right. But you've stepped yeah. out of the cave so, to roll around, right? I'm not affected by my web, so I so I just. Oh, so you stayed in there. To the web. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I am still on the web. So the heart of the web, you see her beyond all the strands. I'll cast a produce flames on the web to burn it away so people can exit without getting stuck. And also, like, can I just try to really observe where all the spiders are on her body and, like, give her advantage on her next roll, basically? It's like, uh, I see one um, there, there, there. Kind there. of one action or the other at this point. If, if he burns away the webs... What does that do to her and the spiders? I'm assuming it wouldn't get all the way to her. But... Well, depends well, on how much you're burning away. Like, if you're just burning away the entrance, that's different from, I mean, it's also not a fireball. So, Well, web yeah. used to be something that you would set, you would cast web, and then you would set it on fire to burn up, uh, which would burn up all the web and do an extra D6 damage. I don't know if that's how it works in Mark's game, though. Wait, what? <laughs> um, there's also the that. fact that uh, Annie is not affected by the webs. So she's not caught okay. up on them and, and bound to them as they're burning on fire. All right. I'll observe where the spiders are. Okay. No Make, on her. I can move out of the way of the fire, basically. Yeah, yeah you're, not, you're not bound up. Because everything else is basically you're pulling the spider web with you as you move out, which is why you're on fire. Um, so, should, so should I set the web on fire or should I observe spiders? That's up to you. You do see that she's rolling around uninhibited by the, by the spider webs. But you can't see the spiders to target them. All right, so web on fire it is. Uh, clear some space. All oh, the web, the webs are going to burn. Produce flame. Okay. It's only a small flame, but it spreads, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, you usually get the front entrance of this of this web un unburned. The rest of it, we'll say, is on fire but not burning yet. If I'd really wanted to be mean when you were, you know, cleaning it before, everything would have lit up on fire, but I, I didn't do that, so I'm not going <laughs> to do you. it now. Uh, and yeah, so you're kind of there cleaning it out the fire again. Uh, Silas. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to zot away until the spiders are gone. Okay. So all three are hitting towards Annie's direction. That's a hit. That's good. For two force damage. It's a hit for 10. And okay. I think a hit for seven. And with the last one, um, technically with the second one, uh, Annie, you no longer feel the the movement all around you. And for a brief cent, uh, second, um, two things happen to you. One, you almost get the sense of the spiders were like, oh, that's why we were supposed to take the other web. And maybe it's just a little bit of sympathy due to the spider cloak that gives you a little insight into collective spider psychology. Uh, and they're all kind of like, oh, no, we were supposed to leave. We didn't leave. We should have left. I'm dead. <laughs> 
The <laughs> other thing is this sort of extreme revulsion that that wells up from in, inside you somewhere. And it's the mental equivalent of ew, 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 you get it off. <clears throat> not quite vocalized, but also not quite your own feeling on this. Like the like, mm. Yeah, yeah. And you can feel, and even as you kind of stand up and, and brush this off, you can kind of feel every once in a while you kind of brush and there's a few legs that fall out or it's kind of, it's like you've been rolling around in spiders for 10 minutes, which technically you have. Silas so so says, both of you over here now. I'm going to check Press if the there's anything interesting Press in the here. Thank you. Press to digitation. Oh, that's a really, really good idea and a very smart idea right now. So I'll say that as you're able to clean them off, it is relief. Before that, you started to feel that that itchiness on the edge of your perception. And you feel like it if you kept that itchiness going for a while, it would have been very distracting for any subtle things you needed to do. So mm -hmm. very smart. Yeah. I, I'm going to first, first, before I get pressed to digitated, I'm, while he's doing it, to to Medric, I'm going to actually search to see if there's anything else in the cave. Okay. Make an investigation check, please. Yeah, I'll check too after I get cleaned off. Okay. You can also make an investigation check. Twelve. Twelve, okay. Um. Adjusting dice. Natural 20 Natural for a 19. 20. Nice. <laughs> For um, Annie, please roll me a d4 and a d6. Okay. Three and two. Um, you find three small money accumulated amongst the piles of clothing and things that are there. Um, you also find two very beaten up swords. They look... Make a history check, actually. They look old. You're not sure how old. Um, for Medric, please make me a D100 roll. 11. Um, these look like they should be in a museum. In fact, you're pretty sure that the small museum at the palace has... Oh, nice. Has uh, um, a couple of these kinds of swords. They look to be uh, um, possibly... Um, uh, oh, shoot, I forgot the name of my own peoples. Um, is it Ancoran? Are From, they Athlonian? They're not Athlonian, no. But they do have the sort of similar stylings of the Hobgoblin nation. Okay. They're slightly curved, broader blades than typically is used elsewhere. Uh, a little bit of styling on them, even though they are, look very, very ancient, you feel like they probably would clean up pretty well and be standard swords or might even be um, something of historical nature. Um, can I get a, a, a D4 from you, Medric? All right. And I always lose that list. Ooh. Okay. You find two more swarms of spiders. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Why is that always missing? Okay. Okay. All right. And I'll need another D100, please. Ninety-eight. Wow, what the fuck? Nice. I rolled this well on a d on a d twenty. Yeah, you have obtained Vorpal Sword. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Uh, so. Amongst the, the, the things that are here, and you get the impression that this was um, a long time ago, these people had come here, um, you find 
two things of interest. One, it takes you a moment to realize what it is. Uh, and the other one seems a lot more mundane at first. Um, so, um, you reach into what is basically a pile of bones and start rummaging through. And you find that there were small pouches and, and uh, leather packs and things like that, which are uh, holding uh, uh, maybe important papers at one point, but as you rifle through them, the papers themselves seem to turn to dust. Uh, and there's not much you can really gain from those. In the bottom of one of those pouches, however, uh, one of those leather satchels, um, you find uh, uh, wrapped up in what was probably a really nice silk at one point, now nothing more than gray tatters, uh, is a little stone. Um, and you pull it out and produce it in the light of your own body, really. Uh, and you see the head of a cat with two glowing green eyes. It's about uh, an inch um, circular space. Um, and it feels lucky. Hmm. Uh, Silas puts his uh, magic sight back on. Okay. Uh, it glows with, I think, enchantment magic. Uh, well, divination magic, actually, sort of. Um, and the other thing you, you feel as you reach in, um, it's cold to the touch, and there's a flash of memory that accompanies the soul stone when you pull it out. As you found one of the uh, a soul stone. The flash of memory is of a family saying farewell as someone gets on board a ship. You see that it is indeed a hobgoblin family that is wishing uh, farewell. The hobgoblin is wearing military garb and seems to be getting on board a military ship. You're not sure exactly where it's headed from, but you get the feeling that if you spent more time intensely studying this, you might be able to eke out more of the memory of this ancient wielder. But make a note on your sheet. You have a soul stone, an entire soul stone. It's gray. It looks kind of like coal. There's an insignia on the top. Um, you're not sure what language it's in, but intuitively you feel it's probably in whatever the hobgoblins have as their native tongue. Um, and it's heavier, denser than you feel like it should be. Hey, Annie. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, look. I'm looking at these, at these swords as well. Like, can you pick that is... up? Can, can I, I pick like what up? Useful? That stone. Okay. Yeah. That, that means I didn't find it. Mandrick is lying, but <laughs> if he wants to go that way, sure. Wait, what ha what just happened here? I looked away for a second and I feel like I missed something. So, so you know how I had to deal with Rodolfo? That if I found... Instead uh, of oh. Mag wait, wait, it's, Mandrick it's not picking a, it's it not up, a coin, it's Annie it? that picks it up. It is a wait, coin. Wait, a, it okay. is a coin. I think I said stone before. It is a coin. Right. Yeah. So, because he's seen what they look like. So, if he points it out to me and I pick it up, it's not him that that got it. I mean, it's your own conscience you have to play with at this point, potentially. Or well, once we f once we find out all the information from it, then then I'll. Or as you recall, there was a mystical sense when Rodolfo made that pact with you. What do you mean, like? It was more than words. You made an agreement. Yep. The mystical agreement. So do I get like a debuff or something if I don't hand it to him or? Nothing we seems to happen. What was that? Nothing seems to happen at the moment. I'll tell Annie it's like, it's a soul stone. It's a coin. If you remember the agreement I made with, and I'll point to him where, wherever he's standing. You don't see him there. He's, he's far off in the distance, hidden behind some rocks. And there's a memory hidden inside it. It might be useful. It seems uh, like. There was a family of hobgoblins wishing farewell to another um, hobgoblin. I'm assuming somebody who went to war. 
I'll I'll show this right. That that explains these these like ancient hobgoblin swords. Feels wrong to be touching this right now. <laughs> yeah, the soul stone feels cold. But I'm just wondering, should we should I give it to Rodolfo right away? Or should we hold on to it? Hold extract on, any okay. usefulness from the stone and then give it to him. Like he'll I mean, get the stone either way. To it for now. I'll pick it up for him and Hold on to it. Okay. Like note to the DM, it's like, I would have handed it to him right away, but it's like the fact, the fact that there might be further use to it, it's like, eh. <laughs> it's, it's also, we can give them to him once he's fulfilled the what he needs to do for us. Yes, that too. So make a note. Um, you don't know the full capabilities at the moment, but make a note that you also picked up a stone of good luck. Yes. Nice. Yep. Yeah, Silas is going to look at that later once we get a few minutes to rest, Yeah, but give, not till then. And to give you some idea what it does, uh, it gives you a plus one bonus to ability checks and saving throws. So it's... Hypothetically... If I were to have that, would that negate the effect of the, the cursed item? <laughs> Does it need attunement? It does need attunement. Okay. Uh, and no, it wouldn't negate it, but you'd be able to use the luck stone to try to defeat the effect of the bad luck stone that you picked up. The unlucky rabbit's foot, as I found my note here. <laughs> Uh, actually, make a dexterity saving throw now that I remember it. <laughs> dexterity saving throw. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, you do drop one of the swords, but manage just to get your foot out of the way. <laughs> Into the bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, pointy thing in the bag of holding. No, I'm not going to do that. You reconvene outside the cave, having found this bit of story and a few relics of that time. Rodolfo's... And there was nothing in there that would make moans other than those tiny spiders? No. In retrospect, you realize that's probably their hunting technique, is to draw unwitting people in uh, to, uh, to do that. Obviously, it doesn't happen for every, every kind of spider, but this one has a insidious way of drawing upon the goodness of people passing by. Nyla says, okay, so the next time we encounter spy uh, a, a nest of spider eggs, we'll stand back, Okay. All right. That wouldn't have happened as badly if you had just let us open one at a time. <laughs> you were, you were, you guys weren't opening one at a time. You both were going after them, and you were going to get a hit anyways. Okay, let's right, go find our friend. Ahead. Well, your friend. Rodolfo is nowhere to be seen, but obviously you still have him tracked. Oh, him too. Um, and it's easy yeah, to Yeah, I can't do any concentration him. spells while I've got that on. It's been a little irritating. <laughs> um, he comes out of the hiding, sees that you're all still alive. Uh, where is Rodolfo? Uh, uh, looks at all of you. Maybe has a little longer look. At Medric, or maybe that's just a, a him lingering, because he always looks a little bit weird. Um, up ahead, where your friend fell the first time, sealed her doom. And he takes you to uh, a spot well off the road now. It is an odd space, only because... There is a pile of stuff here that totally looks out of place. There is half a filing cabinet. 
There is a sign from a local business. Um, there are jugs that look like they probably had wine in them, well broken now and very dry. They gathered many things and brought them all in one space. The others, Zorvax and the rest, were assigned the cleanup crew. I was too, sort of. Your friend fought a lot. Was the other one your friend too, the, the rock? Yeah. And I'll look around, are there any pieces of him left? Even though I can still summon him. Um, you can make, um, well, how do you look around? There's, everything is rocks here. So how do you look around for his rocks in particular? I'll just look around for the specific texture that the graveler rocks had. Okay. Straight up investigation roll then. Anybody else looking for that or looking through mm -hmm. the things that are there? I'll, I'll take a look through what, what's there. Okay. Investigation roll D20. for that as well. Well, also just give a quick look over with, uh, detect magic. Okay. 11. Um, well, I don't see him, but we may be able to, we might be able to get him back somehow. As you're looking around a Medric, you're kind of like, that could have been his toe or maybe it's just a rock. And that happens to you about a dozen times. And then you're kind of looking around and those all might be pieces of him as you realize there's sort of an explosion pattern that seems to uh, emanate from not far where all of the stuff was. Um, a lot of energy must have been used to try to uh, get rid of him, but it seems to have been successful. Um, Overall, having having helped with the, the, the cleanup and the reports of what went missing, um, with this, am I seeing basically, is there anything that's not here? Hmm. Um, certainly the things that are here, um, the reports match up. That sign in particular was one of the oddest things, and here it is. Um, it, it looks as though everything was kind of looked over, spread out, and then stacked back up. You can kind of tell that some things were set, sorted into different piles. Um, the only kind of common threads between the piles that you see, first of all, is that some things were generic, and there's a large pile of things that are kind of, you know, this is just a chair. This is just a, a box. This was just a, what probably was a plant, but it's very wilted now. Then there's a few very specific things, the, the file folders that are there. And it looks like as you're going through, even now the paper is starting to, to be very dry and starting to fall apart. But it looks like pretty regular business transactions of the town. Um, looks Wasn't like it, that from one of the docks? It is an office built or an office in a bit from the docks, but yeah, essentially. Um, and it's just tr transaction records of shipping, basically. Uh, nothing particularly stands out to you, but there's a lot of paper here. So in a quick glance, you're not going to see too much. Um, if you have them, you could take a look at them at your leisure, but it is a fair amount of paper. Um, and then there's the sign and you see a few other specific things. There's a pendant there which uh, seems to have a portrait on the inside of a young, a young boy. Um, there is a, a, uh, uh, a monogrammed uh, handkerchief there with the monogram T on it. Uh, and so there's definitely some things that weren't reported. Um, the, the, nobody reported a handkerchief, for example. Of the things that aren't there, obviously, first of all, are people. There were a number of people who were declared missing after that. Some of them did turn up later. They just fled. Some of them were probably victims of some other crime. Um, but there are no people here. Um, and something that, that Silas can point out is there's no remnant of magic in anything that's here. Mm. And there were a couple of magic items that were taken. Uh, minor ones. Uh, there was a cleansing stone that was taken, um, you know, things along that line. There was an, a, an illusionary, illusory statue that moved like a little, a little person on a, on a pedestal that was taken. Yeah. I thought that might be the case. They took anything of value. Um, looking through, they did not take money. 
and you find uh, the equivalent essentially of a small money amongst the, the wreckage. Not treated, a, you, you get the, well, I should say any coins that were there were gone through one by one and then just sort of lumped together. But you can see the little indents on the, on the sandy, grass, or sandy ground where they had taken them out and probably looked at every coin. Given the, the prevalence of coins in this area, maybe they thought they'd found a stash of soul coins or they were making sure they hadn't found a stash of soul coins. And they're okay. all current vintage too. They all have uh, your father and mother's image on the back. Um, um, current. Okay. um, for the, um, so, so there was nothing other than magic items and people. There was nothing else that was, that seemed to have not been there. I don't have been my reported, list but not in this of the things, but nothing, nothing stands out. No. I'll put the files that um, into the bag of holding. Okay. Um. Unlike most of the times, Dolfo's actually with you and kind of poking through the stuff as well. Um, he seems to be as fascinated with the most mundane of things, um, kind of like, you know, picks up the, the pot where the, the nothing but the wilted remains of a plant is, and it's kind of gently almost lifting up the, the, the plant's remains, uh, almost wistfully looking at what might have been a normal life for him at one point. Little things like that. There's a, picks up a, a, a life preserver and kind of smiles and puts it back down again. It's got a little bit of, of paint still on it, although it feels like it's already starting to fade pretty quickly. I'm going to guess that the sign is very faded as well. Seems to be, yeah. More than you would have expected. Okay. Did you find what you were looking for? No. This was an idea of, of what of what was taken. Nothing seems outside of anything that might have had magical properties that was reported and people. Everything seems to be here. So there are piles like this all over the place. Things that are brought here. That Paturo is looking for, I guess. They get picked over. Not just by the official people. Like Zarvax and his crew, but... Any of us who want to see what it... What... What, what the world... Is like. And kind of throws down the, uh, the, the, the buoy. It's not worth looking at anymore. It's not worth remembering. We're going to have it again. We should go. Yes, we should. If you're still determined. If you're still making your deal. Oh, yeah. I can take you to where the, the dream taker lives that would be appreciated there we go and he kind of turns and starts walking more or less back the way you came not directly but the way the storm had gone because it it was going in the opposite direction you were before um not following a road but following something he seems to have sombered up quite a bit after seeing all of that stuff and moves with a kind of purpose. 
there is still trepidation, and he never walks out in open ground if he can avoid it. Thankfully, the ground here is very broken and uneven. Imagine a large mesa, and you're walking across its top. There are valleys on either side. And there's all kinds of unevenness where some of the ground is sunken down and some of the, the rocks have, have been pushed up by who knows what kind of geography or geology works in this area. Ever present, the ruddy light that seems to emit from no particular source. And once in a while, across this land, you can see the bright lights of beams that flow from the mountain-sized figure at the far end of the cave, sweep across the ground, only to fixate in certain places. After those beams have fixated for a few seconds, you watch as those large four-armed creatures converge, pass through, and return with more. You can't hear anything from this distance, but you see it happen two or three times along your way. And Rodolfo even points out, that pile was only a little while ago. That was some time ago. And you actually see half of a ship perched on one hill. Only looks like the front half of the ship. Sometimes they go for more. It's said he's looking for something, but... I wish he'd just stop. Too much is changing here. He kind of shrugs and continues to walk. So the ship, do I recognize like what kind of ship it is? Um, do you have an appropriate skill? If you have a sailing skill, it can work into that one. Otherwise... Uh, I... Otherwise, we'll make it a, a straight up. I um, know no, I have vehicles, but it's for land vehicles only. It'd be a, a ship type role. Uh, make it a, a uh, um, simple history role. Silas, could, has, could uh, I make a, a role as well where where I've dealt with like different countries There's and sailing and stuff? <laughs> Silas, uh, Silas has watercraft because he's from a sailing family. So Silas can make a roll, which would be easier than what the other two of you will make. Uh, Annie can also make a roll. What skill would you like to use for this? History would be I'm appropriate. I'm going to use history. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the difficulty is is uh, is too higher um, for for uh, Annie. Although rolling a natural twenty means it's kind of <laughs> doesn't matter. Mm. Um. The. So um, for. Silas, this was a big ship. This was a uh, this was not a cargo ship, though. It looks like it was made for traveling quickly, probably a warship of one kind or another. Um, it's not equipped with what would be normally a a a, a, a lot of cargo space. Um, so it's not a fishing vessel. It's not used for cargo traveling. This would have been specifically for traveling quickly between islands to uh, to bring a, a fighting force. Um, it looks like it was probably a really big ship, and there's only a few uh, militaries that would have a ship that big. For any, you recognize it as an Alarian military ship. Um, fairly large. Um, you don't get the name of the ship from here. Uh, at least you can't see it from here. But it does match a ship, and wow, I haven't looked at this one for a while. Um, there was a captain whose name came up a while ago. Let me see if I can find that. Um, not that one. Keep going with the guard captain, which is not the right one. Um, sorry, an admiral. Oh, actually, it would be a lot more meaningful to you, because his last name is Montrose. Hmm. Admiral Swainder Montrose. 
Um, last, I think you found of him, you found some less than savory possibility with some of the work that he had been doing. And he disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Well, there's the circumstance. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you found the nameplate of his ship in the collection in the Baron's basement. Yeah. Uh, and at oh. one point, the uh, the Admiral had been the actual leader of the Alarian Navy. But I think what you'd also found were, were two sets of um, maps, I think, before. One which was the official um, uh, reported course they were going to take. And the other was the one that was a, a reported course of what they did take, indicating that they deviated from the mission they were on. So that might be his ship. I'd like to take a look at that. It is on a distant hill. Oh. Um, so it would be quite mm -hmm. a significant deviation from the trip. You can if you want to. I don't. I'm not prepared to give you that today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but because uh, I sort of didn't clue in on how significant that would be. Uh, but um, we can come back to it I mean, we, uh, on the way back. Well, right now we've only got about 20 minutes left in the session, anyways. Right. So I mean, we yeah. could start off that way and then just end there. It's up to you guys. Or okay. we could just con continue and kind of place this encounter canonically after the next one. So it's basically can continue what we're doing for now and then come back to this one. That's up to you. The, the only real difference is whether I'm going to prepare one thing or the other or prepare some more of one way or the other. <laughs> well one of them one of them happens before the other <laughs> yeah uh certainly rodolfo is keen to get his part done now yeah. and is not keen to have a deviation yeah. but you guys I, are I in charge the, the higher priority would be Melora. yeah i just hope we can actually so, come back this way if we rescue her and there isn't a bunch of things chasing him so. <laughs> yeah so so i'm fine with with coming back but marking down where that this is yeah same okay I mean, if we can remember the way back, but yeah, we can certainly try. You do know that there are some landmarks, but the land is is not full of a lot of really identifiable th things. Um, you're not sure how Rodolfo is navigating, but he never seems to be worried about it. And he's we've you've long since left a road behind. Um, but you may be able to find your way back, or you may can find some help to find your way back. So it sounds like you're going to continue on for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll start. I'll start marking down kind of the the path that we, we've taken any landmarks from here on. Okay. When it comes time to look for it, we'll have you roll a, a survival roll, probably, to find your way. So for now, you continue on. On the other side of this mesa is a long rolling hill. There's even something that passes for grass here. It's very, very scrub-like, very, very dry, kind of gray and not really got much life, but it's the closest you've had for a while. Um, there's no real plants, there's no real trees. And Rodolfo stops as a sort of gray cloud up ahead can be seen. In there. That's where we have to go. What you find, I, I do not. Right I into the cloud? Say. Yes. His area is shrouded in dreams. His and others, I guess. Those he's stolen, those he's made, those he's changed. I... If we were to find any coins in there. So when I gave you a coin, what happens? Do you get the memory of whoever the coin belonged to? 
it depends. Some people live passionate lives, and their coins are more interesting. Others, and to be honest, most of us, we've had all the interesting worn out. And then it's just survival. I'm missing two of my coins. I hope to get one back from this and find the other or a replacement. I'll live someone else's life for a while. In there, I don't know what you'll see. I've only been to the edge myself. And I didn't like it. It was half a nightmare, half a memory. Confusing. And someone standing right next to me didn't experience that at all. They saw a meadow. Maybe I've been here too long. Maybe not all my coins are my own. But your friend will be in there. Are you ready? Can we count on you for help? No. I don't know if I can do any good for you there. I'm not even Wait, sure if there. I can go in. Can we count Wait, on you to not betray us? I don't know. That's as honest as I can be. Like, what I'm thinking as a player is, it's like, I kind of want to give him the coin so he can tell us, like, everything he possibly can about it. But I don't know if I should, because it might come in handy later, like, it's your coin. Yeah, fuck. Follow I, me. Decisions hard. And I, you just start marching towards the cloud. How closely do you follow? Pretty close. Close, yeah. You find that as you go into the cloud, it is extraordinarily thick. It's cold and wet, but not the sort of refreshing feeling you might get on a summer day. It's more like the sweat of uncertainty, the, the edge of anxiety, which I feel like all of us know way too well. It's that sense of dread that sense of unknowing. And then the landscape changes around you. Not, not quickly, very subtly, almost as though it happens out of the corner of your eye. Beneath your feet, you start to feel a road, a proper road, a road well-maintained, a road with actual cobbles that have been put in place and repaired. Grass on either side, green grass. You can even smell it. The dew on the grass is fresh. Through the fog somewhere, it's almost like you're seeing one of the two moons. Very, very vague and only an outline, but or only a shape, I should say. But still, trees start to appear on either side of the road as well. Tall, evergreen, strong, vibrant Still almost night, though. And up ahead, on the very edge of the fog, you see lights. It looks like a building. In fact, it looks very distinctly like a building that you've been to before. It resembles the Baron's Manor. 
That's new. I... Do you see a building, too? He says yeah, very I've uncertainly. Been there you have? Yep. In yep. a different world? And your friend's been there, too? Yep. I believe she has. Yes, she has. Well... Because a lot, a lot of the things were ta- that were taking the only link was it was that we could find was that items were taken from people who were at the ball. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing that linked anything. That might be a good thing. It probably means your friend still exists. Hasn't lost all her coins yet. Could also is be it possible very... to have a surplus of coins? Or has anybody taken a coin out of this world and into their own? I don't know about the latter, but everybody wants to have a surplus of coins. They can be and... used for... Well, anything coins can be used for, and so much more. Some know how to shape them, to use the power inside of them to do other things. I've never learned how to do that, but... If you have coins that aren't your own, well, you can talk to them. So, so as soon as you absorb a coin, you can talk to the former owner of that soul? Sort of. It doesn't work with all of them. It's worked with one I found before. I've heard others talk about it. The Fomori, so have- the... Hmm? Zarvax and his people, the Fomori, they know much more about how coins work. They don't seem to be interested in collecting them all that much, at least not from people who are still alive. The last coin, I guess, is more powerful. They use them to... How did he put it? Become more themselves. I don't know, I don't know exactly what that means. I did find a coin earlier. And when I picked it up, I got a vision of a family waving goodbye to a hobgoblin who was likely going to war. Mm. I have a feeling I can't take these things back to the other world. And I also made a bargain with you, but I would appreciate if you would tell us everything you can possibly tell us about this coin and the former owner of it. And I'll ask Annie to hand me the coin, and then I'll pass it to him. He eyes you with suspicion. But as you produce the coin, he kind of grimaces. I I know. You know what? I know you hid it from me. Well, I'm not petting it. I'm handing it to you right now. I know. I don't know what I'll be able to tell you. Whatever you can. And it doesn't have to be now either. It could be later after, after we rescue Melora. Unless something can help us right now immediately in this battle. Or in this potential battle. I... I don't know about that. Everything here is uncertain. That's something you have to remember. Everything is uncertain everywhere, to a certain extent. Certainly uncertain. And suddenly he grabs the coin from your hand and just presses it into his chest. There's a shadow which expands from the coin over him and his eyes close in peace. Not mine. Someone else's. I mean, I figured that, but... It would be nice to find one of my own again. Well, you will get one back after this. Will it be mine? When you're made up of someone else's coins, who are you? And who am I? And his voice changes as his size also changes. 
Am I Rodolfo? The thief who's lost so much. Or am I Philandrius? As you see him grow in his skin, change in tint. And while his clothes are still worn, they take on a hobgoblin officer's shape. What was the name that he gave? Philandrius or something? Yeah, Philandrius. For now, I am the Honorable Philandrius at your service. This place. Good to have you with us. This place is doom. Best meet it with a firm eye. That's where I'll pause for today as you transform Rodolfo into Philandrius. One of the things that um, Annie knows is the Hobgoblin nations are very, the Karankan nations, that's what it is, Kar- uh, Karanka, I believe, are very oh, insular. The Karavankan, that's it. There you go. Uh, they are very insular. Very little is known outside of their nations, and travel and trade with them is very limited by their design. Every few years or so, they do decide that they want another island, and there is a war. It's weirdly honorable most of the time. What you have before you is probably one of the soldiers sent out to capture another island who never came back. One of the questions is, how recently was that? He may be able to answer that. He may not. Does not have any weapons. Has his armor, or has his, um, his uniform, which is actually an armor. Um, and now, Philandrius. That's it for today. I hope you guys have had fun, this little uh, detour along the way. Finding your way to where... Melora has been taken, where Melora is being kept. Are there any last minute questions before we go? Not for me. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you for playing. And uh, for those of you who might have been watching online, thank you very much. For those who watch on YouTube, you might know that uh, on Twitch, in a semi irregular fashion, Uh, We stream on Sunday afternoons on a semi-irregular time. We had some technical difficulties that delayed us today. Normally around 3 o'clock Atlantic time, which I think in only a few weeks is going to be still 3 o'clock, but the time will be different. The reality of the time will be different as we head towards uh, summer timing. (laughs) Timey-wimey, (laughs) wibbly-wobbly. But you can also check us out on YouTube if you're watching this on Twitch. All these episodes are recorded and put up on YouTube in my channel, youtube.com slash E-N-C-A-F-1. Look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles mega feed, which is everything, or the L-O-T-D-I campaign to the Great Confusion, uh, which is the one just for this one. We just crested session 75 of all of this uh, craziness. Uh, and uh, we'll continue hopefully in two weeks. Uh, until then, uh, once again, thanks to my players, and thank to you for watching. Thanks for running. <laughs>